What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Too Deep. This is part two of our What Are Cherubim series. In our previous video, we went into detail explaining that the cherubim are living creatures, specifically a type of beast of the field. They have four faces and four wings, and for this reason, they aren't the same beings as the four living creatures of Revelation. And the reason is because they in Revelation only have one face each and they have six wings. Now, their four faces, the cherubim, are that of a man, lion, ox, and eagle. They have the likeness of man because of their connection to mankind, and this is also why they have the face of man. When sculpted in the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant, their human face, their man face, was facing the the high priest acting as a buffer, if you will, because of their connection to mankind. Now with that said, because the man face was facing the high priest, the eagle face was facing the mercy seat, and I'll prove it to you. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 10. It says, As for the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. The four had the face of a lion on the right side, the four had the face of an ox on the left side, and the four had the face of an eagle. The lion face and the ox face were on two sides opposite each other. One was on the right and the other on the left. Therefore, we can understand that the eagle face is opposite the face of man. So because the eagle face was opposite the face of the the man, which was pointing to the high priest making his sacrifice, the eagle face was pointing down towards the mercy seat. Now, this is important to understand because eagles represent the connection to God. Here's what I'm talking about. Eagles make their nest, their home on high. Job chapter 39 verse 27, it says, Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? In Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 16, The horror you inspire has has deceived you and the pride of your heart, you who live in the clefts of the rock, who hold the height of the hill. Though you make your nest as high as the eagles, I will bring you down from there, declares the Lord. When God speaks about the eagles, it seems to be in regard to a spiritual comparison because setting their nest, their home on high, is a symbol of setting their nest or home in the presence of God. For instance, desiring to set his throne on high was one of Lucifer's desires to make himself like the Most High. But before he could even attempt his desires, he was thrown into the bottomless pit. And this is all recorded in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through 15 and we go into more detail on this subject in all of our Lucifer related videos under our too deep category such as from Lucifer to Satan which is our first video on Lucifer. Now the wings of the eagle are specifically connected with the right to enter the presence of of the Lord. Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on the eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Isaiah 40 verse 30 through 31 confirms this saying, even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord promises that those who wait on him shall renew their strength. How? They shall re- they shall mount up with wings like eagles. And what does that mean? Well, that word translated mount up is a Hebrew word that I cannot pronounce, but it's, it's right there on the screen. This word means to go up or ascend. Now, the reason that this is so important is because God says that this ascending or going up with wings like eagles is how his people who trust in him will renew their strength. And what is above that can renew our strength? God. God is above us. Our living water, our everlasting life, our bread of life, our rest. Look with me at what God promised Moses when he called him. Exodus chapter 33 verse 14 it says, And he said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Because the presence of the Lord was going with Moses, Moses would in turn receive rest. Now this is why the cherubim's face of the eagle is facing the mercy seat. Because it was connecting the high priest through the face of man to God through the face of an eagle. And this isn't the only time that we see the cherubim in the presence of God. Look with me at Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4 through 5. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out 
of the north and a great cloud with brightness around it and fire flashing forth continually and in the midst of the fire as it were gleaming metal and from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had a human likeness the four cherubim came out from the presence of god how can we be sure Clouds are always connected with the presence of God, with the glory of God. For example, Exodus chapter 16, verse 9 through 12 says, Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud and the lord said to moses i have heard the grumbling of the people of israel say to them at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread then you shall know that i am the lord your god again we see this in exodus chapter 19 verse 9 it says and the lord said to moses behold i am coming to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when i speak with you and may also believe you forever we see this throughout scripture this is why they are opposite each other they are connected as are the other faces but especially these two they're like an auxiliary cord if you will it's this connection between the two sources between man and god now because they enter and exit the presence and glory of the Lord, we can also understand more of their other appearance and likeness that we are given in Ezekiel. So let's read that real quick. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13, it says, As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches moving to and fro among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Now, this is similar to when God made his covenant with Abram in Genesis chapter 15, verse 17 through 18. It says, When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Could it be that their appearance was like burning coals, like the appearance of torches because the glory of God rested upon them? And you know, we'll get into that a little bit more. We'll go a little deeper with each video. But for right now, let's let's just stay focused and keep going. Now, once the four cherubim came out of the cloud, they went on to follow the spirit as stated in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 12. This is where the third face comes into play, the face of an ox. Now, this one, to be honest, it had me a little confused and I was stuck for a while. But after talking it through with my dad, shout out to Reverend Kenny Yates, we've come to a conclusion on the ox. The ox represents doing the work of God, specifically winning the souls for Christ. Check this out. 1 Timothy chapter 15, verse 17 through 18, it says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Paul is explaining that the oxen are those who labor in preaching and teaching, those who win souls. Now he says the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 9 through 12. But because we don't really have time to go into great detail on all that these two verses mean, keep an eye out for that video. So, let's get back to our topic. How does that relate back to the cherubim? Well, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 12 says, And each went straight forward. Wherever the Spirit would go, they went without turning as they went. They followed the Spirit wherever it went. To follow the Spirit is to do the will of God, which is the works of God. We can see this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. So what does that mean exactly for the cherubim? What are you trying to say, Ari? Just spit it out. Well, if the ox is a representation of the job description of winning souls, then that would make them angels. How could we be sure? Well, in our video, What Are Angels?, which is under our Too Deep category, we explained that angels aren't a type of celestial being, but it's a job description. 
It means to be a messenger of God, a ministering spirit. This is why Jesus, various celestial beings, and humans are referred to as angels throughout scripture. Now with that said, they have this, the face of an ox because their job description is to win souls for Christ. So now to bring it back around, let's take a quick look at what the writer of the book of Hebrews says about angels. This is specifically the Hebrew writer explaining the divinity of Jesus as God the Son. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 through 14 it says and to which of the angels has he ever said sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. According to the author of Hebrews, the purpose of angels is to minister so that they may win souls for Christ. Is that not the same as the face of the ox? It sure is. But if we need more proof, here's some more evidence for you. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the living creatures darted to and fro like the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now the interesting thing about appearing like lightning when darting to and fro is that when Jesus compared a being to move like lightning, it was in Luke chapter 10 verse 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now you can check out more on Satan's fall in our video, Revelation chapter 12, War, Why Did Satan Attack? which is under our too deep category. Now the reason that this is interesting is because Satan falling from heaven to earth appeared like lightning. And I'm not saying that every time we see lightning, it's a spirit leaving heaven and coming to earth. I'm, I'm saying it's interesting that Jesus saw Satan's fall from heaven, another realm, if you will, to earth as lightning. So could Ezekiel seeing the cherubim darting to and fro as lightning be the cherubim going back and forth between heaven and earth since they could very well be ministering spirits. Now, Jesus even connects lightning to his coming. Matthew chapter 24 verse 27 says, For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. Again, the appearance of lightning is connected to entering earth from heaven. This would also make sense why their ox face was also towards the high priest when he enters the Holy of Holies in order to minister to him. The whole purpose of the high priest entering the Holy of Holies was to foreshadow the coming of Jesus to make the final and perfect sacrifice for salvation. When the high priest entered the Holy of Holies once a year, they didn't have the connection to God. They didn't have that spiritual connection to God. So the cherubim's face of an eagle ox and man connected the high priest to God. The face of the eagle was pointing down connecting God to the high priest through the face of man. Then the face of man connected to the face of the ox ministering to the soul of the high priest and therefore to the entire congregation of the people of Israel as the high priest stood in the gap for them. But when Jesus went before us, presenting his holy and perfect sacrifice behind the curtain, he didn't need to go through the buffer of the cherubim because he had the Spirit of God upon him and in him. And because we now have the Spirit of God in us, we no longer need the buffer of the cherubim either. In fact, Paul makes it a point to say that there is only one mediator between God and man. Look with me at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1-6. through 6. It says, First of all, then I urge that the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all which is a testimony given at the proper time I believe Paul explains this in more detail in his letter to the Galatians when explaining that the promise didn't come through the law but instead the promise comes through faith in Christ Jesus Galatians chapter 3 verse 19 through 20 says why then the law it was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Those words put in place is the single Greek word diatagias. 
which means to give orders to, prescribe, arrange, to arrange thoroughly, institute, prescribe, etc. So, so we can then understand that the angels were a buffer between God and the intermediary, the high priest, because while the law came from God, he wrote it, there was a buffer between the intermediary and God, the angels. The author of the book of Hebrews seems to be under the same impression as well. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Before, there was a need for a buffer between the intermediary and God because we could not take on or be in the full presence and glory of God. We weren't clean enough to enter the presence of God, the full presence of God. So now... When Christ go, went before us and has cleared the way for us in order to go into the Holy of Holies in the presence of God, when we no longer, now that we no longer need a buffer because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have the connection to God without the cherubim's help, we no longer need a buffer or even an intermediary because Jesus is the only intermediary between God and man and Jesus is God. So there is none between us and God. But what does that mean? Does that mean that angels are no longer needed now? On the contrary, there is no longer a barrier between God and man, but it is still up to angels, the messengers of God, which include spiritual beings and regular humans to spread the gospel and minister to people. Paul puts it like this in Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. He says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how, can they, and how are they to believe in him whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Unless someone tells them, People can't come to Christ. And we'll get more into that and the importance of that in our next video. But for right now, let's just sum up what we have here so far. The cherubim are living creatures, specifically a type of beast of the field. They have four faces and four wings. For this reason, they aren't the same beings as the four living creatures of Revelation, who has one face and six wings. Now, the Four faces of the cherubim are that of a man, lion, ox, and eagle. They have the likeness of man because of their connection to mankind. This is also why they have the face of man. When sculpted in the mercy seat, which is on the Ark of the Covenant, their man face was facing the high priest, acting as a buffer, if you will, because of their connection to mankind and because mankind could not enter the full presence of God. The cherubim also have the face of an eagle because that is their connection to God. They enter the presence and glory of God, which is why their likeness is like that of burning coals and torches. They darted to and fro like lightning because they go between heaven and earth, bringing messages from God to man because they are ministering spirits. This is why they have the face of an ox because they are angels, ministering spirits. Their purpose is to win souls for Christ as is every angel's purpose whether spiritual being or human. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and then it answered a few more questions about the cherubim. If you feel that we left something out or maybe we didn't explain everything as well as we could have, let us know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions that we didn't answer pertaining to the specific topics of this video, let us, let us know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.